What is up everyone, it is Sacred Saiyan here, welcoming you to the first episode of What if Goku was reborn with all his memories and power? If you end up liking today's video, then please consider subscribing. It is free, and you can always unsubscribe later. There's a link in the description of the video on my Discord server, and also to become a channel member if you want to support the channel. The highest channel member tier is called Royal Blue, so if you want to support me, then that is definitely the best way to do so. And with all of that out of the way, let's get into the first episode of What if Goku was reborn with all his memories and power? This video begins at the end of the Granola arc. However, in this timeline, events change with the arrival of Black Frieza. Frieza still kills Gas and Alec. However, when we arrive at a short scuffle with Goku and Vegeta, this is where things change. Instead of letting the Saiyans survive, he decides to kill them on the spot terrifying Minato, and Frieza then leaves the planet, and powers up a ball of energy in order to destroy it. Facing imminent destruction, Minato quickly uses a set of Dragon Balls, and summons the wish-granting dragon. Due to what Minato experienced with Bardock, and witness from Goku, Minato sees Goku as their only chance to make things right, so Minato wishes to send Goku back, so he has time to prepare for this threat. The dragon has to interpret this wish, due to how vague it is, but with that, the dragon says the wish is granted, as Goku in Otherworld disappears. And many years earlier, on planet Vegeta, Goku's mind and power goes into his baby form. This is the day Goku was born. He's currently asleep in a chamber full of liquid, and this is the first time Goku's power level will ever be read. But as the scientist puts his scouter up against the chamber, the scouter immediately breaks. The scientist is shocked, but just thinks that the scouter must have been broken. However, after he attempts to read the baby's power with multiple other scouters, the result is always the same. The number on the scouter always reaches the 100,000 mark before it explodes. The scientist gathers his colleagues and shows them his findings, and with this, they go to King Vegeta and inform him of this child. Once King Vegeta sees the child for himself, he's furious. First, the child of Paragus had that abnormally high power level, but now the son of a low-class Saiyan? King Vegeta orders them to send him to Vampa. The same planet they sent Broly to, and the scientists reluctantly agree, beginning the preparations to do so. But Bardock catches wind of what is happening, and storms through multiple soldiers in order to reach his son's space pod before it leaves, and he then changes the destination from Vompa to Earth. Bardock would then be charged with treason, and after a long battle against multiple elites, Bardock is eventually killed for his crimes. And some time later, the entire planet is destroyed as well. Goku's space pod crashes into the earth, and with this, Goku finally wakes up. Goku is confused, looking around at his surroundings. He was just in Otherworld. Was he revived? But if he was, then where is everyone? Goku then looks at his hands, and sees them in their baby form. And Goku then looks up, to see Grandpa Gohan looking down at him. Goku's eyes tear up, as he hugs the old man, who is confused, but doesn't object to the hug. Goku still isn't sure what is exactly going on, so he doesn't start babbling to Grandpa Gohan about stuff which has yet to happen. So for now, he just goes with the old man, who invites him into his home. In the evening, Goku sits outside, meditating on a log, and thinking deeply. He isn't sure why it happened, but all he can tell is, that he was transported into the body of his past self, however he is yet to test if he still has his former power. Goku thinks, now is a better time than never, so Goku calms his mind, and then opens his eyes, which are now a silver colour, along with his hair. Goku turns around, and sees Grandpa Gohan there, with his jaw dropped. An apple then begins falling towards Goku, and as it is about to hit him, Goku catches the apple without even looking, and then reverts back to normal, and proceeds to eat the apple. Gohan then falls unconscious, out of shock, and Goku takes him inside, so he can rest, but once he awakes, Grandpa Gohan asks Goku exactly how he did that. Goku explains the dumbed-down version of events to Grandpa Gohan, who gets a slight understanding of what Goku is saying, however he doesn't fully believe it. I mean, time travel? Like, yes he's an alien, so it couldn't really get much weirder, but now, he's supposedly a future alien with the power of gods? It's a little difficult to believe, however he doesn't outright throw it out, since it doesn't look like Goku is lying to him. Over time, Gohan believes Goku more and more, even finding out about his own untimely death which is avoided in this timeline. Goku did think about removing his tail, but then he decided not to, thinking that maybe he could use it to attain a new power which he could use to stop Freezer in that new form of his. However, for the time being, Goku just avoids the moon, 
not wanting to accidentally destroy the Earth on a rampage. At some point, Bulma would arrive in search of the four-star Dragon Ball, and Goku would give it to her, under the condition he can go along with her, since he knows she'll need him. Bulma agrees to this, so Goku goes along with her, and yeah, he literally one-shots any trouble they come across. Like seriously, it's laughable. Goku does get to see Chi Chi again though, and this time, when he promises to marry her, he actually means it. Goku's actions also indirectly result in King Piccolo not being released, as the Pilaf gang never get the chance to release him, and Goku wouldn't compete in any of the other world martial arts tournaments since he knew he wouldn't get a challenge, up until the one where he would fight Piccolo Jr. in the original timeline, for the sole purpose of meeting Chi Chi there. Goku never went to train with Roshi, Korin or Kami, since he still remembered everything he learned from them originally, so he had no reason to train with them. He did still speak to Kami though, since Kami was flabbergasted by Goku's power, and Goku did visit Roshi's island in order to still become friends with Krillin. After Goku gets married to Chi Chi, they still give birth to Gohan, and Grandpa Gohan gets to see his grandson before passing due to old age within the years before Raditz's arrival. Once Raditz does arrive on the planet, Goku immediately senses him and uses instant transmission to appear in front of the farmer with a shotgun, saving his life. Raditz would then begin to explain that he is Goku's brother and tells Goku his heritage, but Goku tells Raditz he already knows that and this time he doesn't want his brother to die. Raditz is confused. But then, Goku disappears, and reappears with Vegeta and Nappa. The three Saiyans are shocked at what is happening, but to gain their trust, Goku transformed into Super Saiyan, and they immediately quiet down. Goku tells them that he will help them kill Frieza, however in return, they must not harm any more innocent people. The three can't exactly argue with this, so they reluctantly agree, and after that, Goku asks for Raditz to teach him how to create a fake moon if he can. Vegeta boasts that he is far more proficient at it, but Goku says, that's nice, but he wants Raditz to teach him. Goku never got to spend time with his brother in his timeline, so he wants to make up for it in this one. Goku then teleports them all up onto the lookout, and tells Kami that they'll need to use the time chamber. Kami is worried about the other Saiyans, but Goku assures him that they won't be an issue, and Goku tells Vegeta and Nappa to train, while he goes off with Raditz. Vegeta and Nappa are barely able to stand, so they'll find that quite difficult, but Goku is sure they'll figure it out. Raditz is laying on the ground, not even able to stand up, so Goku grabs him and flies a distance away before getting Raditz to explain to him how to form a fake moon. After many attempts, Goku figures it out, and after he creates a fake moon, he transforms into a new Zaru. Goku begins rampaging, and nearly steps on Raditz, but at the last second, Vegeta flies in and grabs his subordinate. Nappa asks Vegeta what they are supposed to do, but Vegeta says nothing. It pains him to say it, but not even all of them combined could make a dent in Goku. So, the three Saiyans watch from afar, as Goku continues rampaging as a great ape, but gradually, he begins to slow down. Some time later, Goku gains control, and then gets Vegeta to destroy the fake moon, so he can return to his base form. After this, Goku gives Raditz enough key for him to be able to stand. Goku says that now, he will train all of them. Eventually, he'll need them to catch up to him if they are able to defeat Frieza. The Free Saiyan warriors not knowing that Goku is on about a Frieza far more powerful than the one they already see as unbeatable. After two years of training, the four Saiyans exit the time chamber. Vegeta, Nappa and Raditz have all became better people within the time of training, as Goku's pure heartedness really rubbed off on them. Goku did consider bringing Gohan into the time chamber, but not only did he know, Gohan would have probably died by just entering the chamber, but he also didn't want to force his son into fighting. Gohan didn't really get a choice in the main timeline, and Goku thought his son deserved one here. Now Goku has trained up the Saiyans, he tells them to grab onto him as he searches for Frieza's energy throughout the universe, and he tells them to get ready as he then teleports them all to Frieza's location. And with this, I'm going to end off this part. This video begins on a random planet Frieza owns. Zalban and Adoria are reporting to Frieza when Goku, Vegeta, Nappa and Raditz arrive. Both Zalban and Adoria have shocked expressions on their faces, but Frieza has one of rage, shouting for his minions to kill those monkeys. So Zalban and Adoria rush towards them, but Nappa and Raditz both outstretch their hands and fire blasts which kill Frieza's subordinates within an instant. Frieza stands up, transforming into his final form, and Goku appears in front of him, saying he's sorry, but he knows how things end 
and he can't let him live this time. But as Goku is about to attack, Vegeta kicks Freezer away and says he wants to be the one to put Freezer in his place. Goku knows Vegeta should be able to handle Freezer at this level, so he concedes and watches as Vegeta rushes after Freezer. Raditz and Nappa ask Goku if they should help him, but Goku says there's no need. Any one of them could handle Freezer at this stage. It isn't this Freezer he's worried about. Raditz and Nappa both look confused, but Goku says they should go and see what's happening. So then, the three fly in the direction of Vegeta and Freezer, miles away. Frieza is shooting death beams at Vegeta, with Vegeta laughing as he smacks him away with ease. Frieza then tries to punch Vegeta in the face, but he catches his fist, sucker punching Frieza in the stomach, and then proceeding to grab his tail and throw him into the ground. Frieza slowly gets on his feet, but Vegeta says that he's not done as he grabs Frieza's face and drags him across the ground before uppercutting him into the sky, and then appearing above him to slam him back into the ground. Frieza is on one knee, and Vegeta lands in front of him telling Freezer to bow to the prince, as he powers up a ball of energy in his hand. Freezer is speechless, but enraged. How dare this monkey filth disgrace him like this? Freezer then puts his hands onto the floor, ready to destroy the entire planet, but just as he does, Goku and the others arrive, and Goku in this split second activates True Ultra Instinct and blitzes Freezer, punching him into the air and firing a Kamehameha so fast that nobody on the battlefield could even perceive it. And then, Frieza is killed. Goku reverts to his base form, and the three other Saiyans stare at him in awe. They never saw Goku transform into anything above Super Saiyan before, and even that was incredible to them. Goku says that some of them may learn it at some point, looking at Vegeta as he knows he'll take his own path, but he isn't sure what Raditz and Nappa might do. Now Frieza has been killed, the Saiyan squad head back to Earth, and before Goku does anything else, he quickly gathers the Dragon Balls, and wishes away any virus he may have. He doesn't know how he got the heart virus, so he's just taking extra care to make sure he won't die from it. After that, we have a time skip to the Android Saga. During this time, Goku continued his own training to perfect True Ultra Instinct and evolve it, while also trying to combine Uzaru with Super Saiyan, within a newly upgraded time chamber. However, he focused more on True Ultra Instinct, so he never got around to mastering the Golden Uzaru transformation. Vegeta would end up with Bulma after Goku introduces them to each other, and while Nappa stays in the spare room at Capsule Corp, Raditz moves in with Goku and Chi Chi, growing a strong bond with his nephew Gohan, and because both his father and uncle are warriors, Gohan actually does choose to start training. Chi Chi here wouldn't even be against it, as long as he keeps up with his studying, since Goku has been really good with Gohan and her choices, and Goku has already promised her that he will never let anything bad happen to their son and she believes him. Other than that, Goku did continue training Vegeta, Nappa and Raditz, and they all actually gained trace amounts of God Key, along with gaining access to both Super Saiyan and even Super Saiyan 2. Now we've covered the events of the time skip, we head to Goku, Vegeta, Nappa and Raditz, all waiting at the city where the androids are supposed to arrive. Goku is the only one who knows why they are there, but this time, even he is wrong. Jiro realised that it would be impossible to make either Android 18 or Android 17 anywhere near as strong as Goku. He upgraded them as much as he could, giving them the ability to absorb Ki, among other things, but even still, they could never get on the level of Sun Goku. There was only one project of his which could, Cell, so he focused all of his effort into releasing Cell, he has Cell absorbed the unconscious Android 17 and 18, but now, Cell also has the ability to absorb energy through his hands as well. The Saiyans are still waiting at the city. Nappa asks what are they even doing there, and Goku tells him to wait a bit longer. The time should come very soon, but as he says this, the entire city explodes. Goku with a shocked expression on his face. That wasn't meant to happen. The four Saiyans then fly into the remains of the city and look around before Cell lands in front of them. Goku is confused. Cell shouldn't be here, or be perfect. Either way, He'll deal with this quickly, transforming into Super Saiyan Blue and firing a Kamehameha at Cell. But Cell just outstretches his hand and absorbs a blast. Goku realises that he can absorb energy just like Jiro could, and he asks Cell where Jiro is, but Cell says that he is no longer in the realm of the living. He tried to order around the perfect being, and was punished accordingly. Vegeta, Nappa and Raditz all transform into Super Saiyan 2 and get in their fighting stances but Goku puts his arm in front of them, saying they need to let him handle this. They won't stand a chance. Goku gets in his fighting stance, 
Basalt tells Goku that he hopes he won't be holding back, because he does have data on that silver-eyed form of his. Goku's eyes widen, but he says fine, transforming into Trollter Instinct, and Cell smirks, saying this is going to be fun. Goku and Cell rush at each other. Goku knowing that he can't use any key attacks, or else Cell will just absorb them. He also knows that he can't get grabbed by Cell, because he'll just absorb his energy. However, that isn't really an issue for Goku, because even though they had data on his Trollter Instinct, that doesn't mean the DNA robots were able to touch him in that form. Meaning, Cell doesn't have Ultra Instinct. Though, don't think this means Cell is weak by any means. He still has the DNA of a far stronger Goku, Vegeta, Nappa and Raditz, alongside absorbing two heavily upgraded versions of the original androids. Goku and Cell continue clashing, and Goku is smiling the entire time. Cell asks why this is, but Goku just says that he's having fun. He didn't think he'd be able to face anyone this strong until Beerus showed up. Cell has no clue what Goku is going on about, but he is aggravated nevertheless, and continues to try to hit Goku, but can't even land a single attack. Goku even powers down to Ultra Instinct Omen, Cell not noticing the difference, since Goku's appearance doesn't change. But Cell begins to actually land a couple blows on Goku, so he begins to laugh, thinking that he is getting stronger. The fight carries on for a while, however in the end, Cell is simply no match. Cell was just like a training dummy for Goku, in order to gauge his current power. And now Goku has had his fun, it's time he puts this to an end. Goku reactivates Trial Ultra Instinct, and performs a meteor combo on Cell, before throwing him into the air, and firing a blast at him. Cell goes to absorb the blast, but as he does, he realises Goku put hardly any energy into it. And Goku then appears behind the disoriented Cell, and fires a full power Kamehameha into his back, which completely eviscerates the bio-android for good. Goku reverts to his base form. The other Saiyans running up to him in amazement, and Goku scratches the back of his head, and laughs, saying they'll catch up in no time. Goku then flies around the planet, gathering the Dragon Balls, and he uses the wish in order to revive the androids. He knows they are allies who could certainly be useful in the future, and they didn't deserve to die anyway. Once they are revived, Goku appears in front of them, explaining to them what happened, and that they are now free. The androids don't know what to think. The idea of killing Goku was drilled into their minds, but he is the man who just saved their lives. I mean, it's not like they could kill him anyway, so they might as well just believe him. Goku tells them to hold that fort, as he disappears and reappears with Krillin, introducing him to Android 18, and he then tells Android 17 that they need a word. Goku and 17 walk a short distance away, 17 being nervous the entire time, but Goku puts his hand on his shoulder, and he tells him that he can do whatever he wants, maybe be a park ranger, but he has one thing to ask him. 17 asks what it is, and Goku tells him that he needs to train as well. There's going to be a time where he might be needed. 17 thinks that this is a small request for saving his life, so he agrees, and Goku thanks him, saying that's all, and he'll leave him to it. Krillin and Android 18 continue talking, while Goku and the other Saiyans return to their home. Raditz explaining Goku's fight in great detail to Gohan, who is in awe, and wishes he got to fight. Goku smiles, remembering Gohan beating Cell in his timeline, and he ruffles Gohan's hair, saying maybe one day, but hopefully, he'll never need to. Chi Chi then walks in with dinner, and with that, we are going to end off this part. This video begins after the 7 year time skip after the Cell Saga. Gohan would have been training here and there during this time, but ultimately would choose to focus more on his school life, meeting Videl and still falling in love with her. Goku on the other hand would keep training hard alongside Raditz, Nappa and Vegeta. The three would easily be able to master Super Saiyan as well as Super Saiyan 2, and even begin to tap into their trace marks of God Key. Goten would also be born, and in contrast to his older brother, Goten would love fighting, often training hard alongside Trunks, as the two boys would already be able to transform into Super Saiyans and even Super Saiyan 2s. Goku here would not join the tournament, but Gohan still would, and he would still get his energy stolen by Swapovich and Yamu. This time however, it will be a lot more energy as Gohan would have trace amounts of God Key. Goku, before Boo could get revived however, would teleport to Bobbidi's lookout. If you think that Goku is going to stop Bobbidi however, you're wrong. He has a different idea in mind for the defeat of Majin Buu. Once Goku oversees Buu's revival, he quickly teleports back home. Once he arrives, he calls two names, Goten and Trunks. He tells Goten and Trunks that the threat they have been training for has finally arrived. 
he reminds the boys to use the technique they've been practicing and wishes them good luck. Goten and Trunks smirk. As Trunks tells Goten they should do it now, the boys commence a fusion dance and become Gotenks. Gotenks then blasts them off in pursuit of Boo and finds himself at a nearby city. He quickly gets to work, taking quick work of Bobbidi, finishing him off with a blast. Then he turns to Boo and begins to absolutely decimate him. Gotenks, only in his base form, is strong enough to overpower Boo massively. Remember that Gotenks would have trace amounts of God Key within him, and this would be enough to make him stronger than Boo. With one final Kamehameha, Boo would be destroyed, and Gotenks would defuse. The two boys would give each other a fist pump, before then returning home. Goku congratulates the boys, as the reasoning behind him doing this was to ensure the next generation have some hope. Goku knew that he won't always be around, and this would be his reason behind letting Gotenks handle Boo. Up until Beerus arrives, Goku decides to focus his training on Vegeta, Raditz and Nappa, helping them all obtain Super Saiyan God. He would also train with Vegeta, and together, they both would tamper with their great ape form. Goku wanted to try and think of a new base form he could use that was stronger than his own, and after months of trying to combine and master Super Saiyan with his Uzaro form, Goku and Vegeta would be able to transform into Super Saiyan Fours. On the other hand, Nappa and Raditz decided to stick with their god forms, and pursue Super Saiyan Blue. But for now, they won't be able to reach that power just yet. Four years later, Beerus would awaken, having a dream about a Super Saiyan God. However this time, Whis would inform Beerus of a very strong Saiyan residing on Earth. Beerus would be more interested in fighting Goku here, and Goku was prepared for the challenge. As Beerus and Whis made their way to Earth, Bomber's birthday party was celebrated, as planned. However, moments after this, it would be interrupted by Beerus and Whis. Goku, who knew who Beerus and Whis really were, decides that he wants to test his power. In the end, he knows it works out after all, so he wants to go full out. Goku blitzes Beerus, and the two begin to fight. This battle is quite even for now, until Beerus releases a bit more power. Now, Goku is forced into using Super Saiyan 2, but even this didn't change much at all. Goku decides to ramp it up, going straight to Super Saiyan God, and this battle looked quite a lot like the one in canon, except this time, Goku is much stronger. The two go blow for blow, sending shockwaves of energy through the planet. Goku's power only multiplies as he transforms into Super Saiyan Blue. This form shocks Beerus, but he only powers up more, and the two engage once again. Whis, observing the battle, smirks, as he realises exactly what Goku has been hiding this whole time. Throughout this entire battle, it seems like Goku has been slipping in and out of Ultra Instinct in order to dodge some of Beerus' more powerful attacks. Goku sends a blast at Beerus, before lunging backwards. He tells Beerus that it's time they get serious, as he transforms into true Mastered Ultra Instinct. Between the Cell Saga and now, he was finally able to achieve it. Beerus is shocked that Goku is able to reach this level of power with no training from any angel, but he tells Goku that his power is still only a fraction of his own. Beerus powers up, tapping into his full power, with a purple aura surrounding him. The destroyer form was very powerful, and Goku and Beerus began their epic fight. The fight was so powerful that the entire macrocosm was shaking. Goku dodged Hakai after Hakai, as Beerus' rage only fueled his strength. Goku noticed this however, and decided to finish the battle quickly. Goku began to power up a Kamehameha, as he leaped over Hakai Blast using key balls on his feet. Goku sent the blast at Beerus, who countered it with a Hakai of his own. Goku's beam began to be overpowered more and more, as Beerus finally won the beam struggle, killing Goku. But, a bright white light flash sparked, and a yell was heard. From out the light stepped Goku who was able to withstand the energy of the Hakai using his own godly spirit fused with Ultra Instinct. However, after this, the two both powered down from exhaustion, and thankfully, all on Earth was well, as the planet was somehow able to survive the Battle of Gods. Goku thanked Beerus for the fight, and Beerus thanked Goku as well. He was now much more motivated to become stronger because of how strong these mortals are getting as well. Vegeta, who watched the entire fight, couldn't believe the power of Beerus. He knew one thing was for sure, he was going to become that strong. After this, Vegeta would then go on to ask Whis to train him. Whis agreeing as long as he gives him good food, and then, they travel to Beerus' planet, 
But with that said, we're going to end off this part. Last episode, we left off with Goku taking on Beerus in an exciting match. The next events would all play out the same, so let's quickly go over them. Goku would easily win the Universe Tournament himself, and the Goku Black Arc would also be quite easy because of Ultra Instinct. He was able to defeat Zamasu before he could truly learn Ultra Instinct, so this would lead us to the Tournament of Power. Goku has to find 10 fighters to join his team, and he goes immediately to ask Vegeta first. On Beerus' planet, Goku asks Vegeta if he wants to join the Tournament of Power, and after Goku tells him the stakes, Vegeta agrees on one condition. Vegeta asks Goku to spar him, so that he can see how strong he truly has become. We all know Goku is never running from a fight, so he steps up, and the two rush at each other. In base form, the two's power is spectacular, as the speed of each blow sends shockwaves throughout the planet. Vegeta is the first to transform, becoming a Super Saiyan and fighting on. Goku is unfazed by Vegeta's transformation and keeps attacking. This only makes Vegeta more mad as he transforms into Super Saiyan 2. Goku now begins to get excited as he tells Vegeta to start trying. Goku transforming straight into Super Saiyan 4 as Vegeta goes into Super Saiyan God. This is a matchup that shook the entire planet. The two kept raging on as the battle seemed quite even. Vegeta, however, noticed that whenever he formed a ball of destroyer key around his fist, Goku would unconsciously transform into Ultra Instinct to dodge the attack. Vegeta knew that he had to keep powering up, so he transformed into Blue. Now, Vegeta started to gain the edge over Goku, but Goku simply transformed into Blue alongside him. The two powers clashed Blue Lightning all over the planet, but the two kept fighting, and Vegeta wasn't going to stop. Vegeta powers up a ball of Akai, and sends it at Goku, he uses Ki Blast of his own to deflect the attack. Vegeta warns Goku that his next power-up is power he hasn't seen before, but Goku smirks and tells Vegeta that he knows what he's doing. Vegeta begins to scream as his muscles bulk and he transformed into Ultra Ego. Beerus and Whis were able to teach Vegeta how to use God of Destruction powers in hopes of Vegeta being the next God of Destruction. Now, Goku decided to show his full power as well, transforming into True Mastered Ultra Instinct. Goku with this power easily began to toy around with Vegeta, who wasn't able to master his new power within such a small time frame. Vegeta, who was getting more and more frustrated, decided to end the battle with one final attack. Vegeta began to power up the biggest blast he could, and he sent it at Goku. Goku responding by using a small blast to propel him forward as he launched towards Vegeta. Just before Goku hit Vegeta's blast, he teleported out of sight. Vegeta was left confused as Goku appeared out of nowhere, knocking Vegeta unconscious from behind. Goku gave a thumbs up to Beerus and Whis as they smiled back at him. Goku told them about the Tournament of Power, and Beerus and Whis agreed to bring Vegeta to Earth before the tournament began. Whis wanted to teach Vegeta a few more things before the tournament begins. Goku said goodbye as he made his way back to Earth and recruited the next couple members. Once the team was made, he gathered them all together, the team consisting of Gohan, Goku, Vegeta, Raditz, Roshi, Krillin, 17, Piccolo, and 18. The team gets transported to the world of Void, and the tournament is set to begin. Goku already knows the strongest fighter is Jiren, however, so he has a better idea on how he can make this tournament more entertaining. Goku teleports to the pair of Universe 6 Saiyans. He says hello to Khalifa and Kale, and then tells them to fuse as quickly as possible. The two are startled that Goku knew they snuck in some Patara earrings, but Zeno allows it to happen because it's more fun for him to watch. Once Goku gets the two to agree to his plan, he teleports back to Jiren. Goku stands in front of Jiren and tells him that his fight is not with him, but with another fighter. From behind, Kefla rushes at Jiren, and the battle between the two begins. Goku smiles as his ultimate plan was to teach Kefla as much as he could during this battle, in order to defeat her himself after. The battle between Jiren and Kefla, however, wasn't too impressive. With no knowledge of Super Saiyan like they had previously, Jiren was able to overpower the fusion and knock them out. Realising the error in his ways, and he realises that this is a step his universe must take without him. Goku tells Beerus his decision, and although Beerus was unhappy, ultimately, Goku jumped off the ring, and allowed the tournament power to continue with him eliminated. There was no one in the multiverse strong enough to challenge Goku's power, so participating wasn't really an issue for him. He was confident in his team to save his universe. For the rest of the tournament, let's focus on the characters who were really impacted by the scenario. So in this case, Raditz, Vegeta, Nappa, and Gohan. 
Vegeta would take it upon himself to defeat the strongest warriors in the tournament. Vegeta alone would take on both Toppo and Jiren. The fight was electric. And Vegeta was finally getting that moment he's been waiting for the entire show. Going straight to Super Saiyan 4, Vegeta would begin his attack on Toppo and Jiren. The two both felt the sheer power of that other fighter, the one named Goku. But this, this was a whole other level. Jiren told Toppo that Universe 7 wasn't to be played with. Jiren told Toppo to go and finish off the rest of the universes as fast as possible. Toppo obliged and began to leave, but Nappa and Raditz teleported in front of him. The two smiled and powered up as well, as there was no escape for Toppo. Nappa and Raditz, who were both able to use Super Saiyan Blue, begin their battle with Toppo. Toppo was quickly put on the back foot, but after enough taunting from Nappa, he would use his full power. Nappa and Raditz weren't what? expecting Toppo to be able to use his form as they haven't even had the chance to see Vegeta use his form up until right before the tournament. Gohan would be taking on Dispo during this time, but with him being so much stronger in this scenario, the fight would go a lot differently. Although Gohan doesn't have the ultimate form, he does have Super Saiyan Blue, and his power was enough to overpower Dispo's speed. With the Kamehameha, Gohan eliminates Dispo from the tournament, moving on to eliminate some more of the fodder fighters remaining in the tournament of power. Nappa and Raditz, who were both on the back foot against Toppo's full power, were joined by Piccolo and Seventeen, the only other fighters from Universe 7 left, along with Vegeta and Gohan. Toppo was even more enraged seeing more fighters trying to oppose him, and powers up even further. Toppo's aura explodes, as he creates a Hekai to destroy the entire tournament arena. Dispo from the stands yells at Toppo to calm down, but Toppo is too far beyond reason. Raditz, Nappa, Seventeen, and Piccolo power up as well, creating their own blast to counter Toppo's, but the sheer willpower of Toppo was keeping him alive. Seventeen, realising what he must do, surrounded himself with as much energy as he could. Eighteen yelled at Seventeen to stop, but Seventeen exploded his key and eliminated Toppo along with himself. Toppo, however, would be able to eliminate the likes of Piccolo as well as Nappa. So Universe 7, only had three fighters remaining in the tournament. Vegeta, who was still taking on Jiren, would now be in Super Saiyan Blue, as Super Saiyan 4 wasn't enough to overpower Jiren just yet. Jiren, who would be using more and more power with each blow exchanged, was amazed by the power of Universe 7, and it only fueled him to fight harder. Vegeta was enjoying the battle, and couldn't help but look at Kakarot in the stands. He truly was the ultimate warrior, and Vegeta had no one to thank but Goku. Vegeta knew it was time to finish the battle once and for all. He told Jiren that Toppo wasn't the only one able to harness the power of destruction. As a purple aura began to illuminate the arena, and Vegeta powered up to Ultra Ego. With this power, he forced Jiren to use his full power, but even Jiren at full strength would be eliminated with ease. Before Jiren was finally eliminated, however, he thanked Vegeta and Goku as well. Vegeta powered up a blast and finished off Jiren, winning the tournament, and as he made a promise to Kaba earlier to restore his universe, he decided to wish them all back for the wish from the Super Dragon Ball. This video begins after the tournament of power. The Moro arc never exists, since here, Goku knows Moro will never change, so just goes through MUI and kills him the first instant they meet. And now, we would normally be heading to the Granola arc, but in this timeline, events are altered. If you remember, the Resurrection F arc never took place, and there was a reason for that. Freezer was still revived at the same time as in canon, and with this Freezer, decided to train for more than four months, before coming face to face against the Saiyans once again. This Freezer experienced facing a Saiyan who moved so fast that his eyes couldn't even track him, and this very Saiyan killed him in a single shot. That is a power far greater than he experienced in the canon version of events. Not only this, but his men told him that through their surveillance, they discovered that very same Saiyan tied in an all-out match against Lord Beerus himself. And after training for four months and achieving his golden form, Frieza knew he would have no chance, so he didn't strike yet. He lurked in the shadows, rebuilding his empire planet by planet, until eventually he came across a planet with a strange room. Within this room, time worked differently. Frieza first sent some of his troops in, telling them to go in there for a month to survey the area and then return. But to his complete shock, they left the room shortly after they entered. And when Frieza asked him why they left so quickly, his men were confused, saying they didn't. They were there for a whole month. Frieza was intrigued, entering the room, and to test his men's word, 
He trained in there for a year before exiting. Once he exited, he saw that only a day passed, and Frieza then had an evil grin before re-entering the chamber. He was going to only stay there for another nine years, but he eventually started to even enjoy the training, and he wanted to test his limits, so he stayed in the room for an extra ten years before exiting. That's right, this Frieza is even more powerful than the Cannon Black Frieza, training for twenty years instead of ten. And now, he knows for a fact he is ready to take his revenge. On Beerus' world, Goku is meditating, wondering if he should go to Planet Serial and introduce himself to Granola before anything bad goes down. But then, his eyes open with a shocked expression, as on a distant planet, he senses an ominous aura spiking. He hasn't felt that key since the day he was killed and then reborn. Goku believed Frieza never got revived, since he never showed up on Earth before the Universe 6 tournament, but he guesses that was just optimistic thinking. Either way, Goku is ready for this fight. It's what he's been training for for the past 40 or so years. Goku is about to go over to Vegeta and tell him to get ready, but Vegeta is already walking up to him and telling Goku to get a move on. He is all too familiar with that energy. This time, he won't let Goku be the one to snuff him out. Goku isn't sure Vegeta is ready for this, but he knows he won't be able to stop him, so he grabs onto Vegeta's shoulder and puts his other hand on his head. Goku then closes his eyes, locking onto Frieza's energy, as he thinks that this is where he finally tests if he can stop Frieza for good. He knows he can't let him live this time. Goku then locks onto Frieza's key, teleporting onto it and arriving on a barren, desolate planet. Frieza turns around with a smirk on his face, saying that he thought that might get the monkey's attention. Goku steps forward, ready to fight Frieza, but Vegeta puts his hand in front of him, saying that he will be the one to defeat Frieza. Goku already stole the win last time, Goku thinks for a moment. He knows that Frieza can't be underestimated, however this might be a good way for him to gauge Frieza's power. Goku says fine, but Vegeta needs to go all out from the start, no holding back. Vegeta scoffs, saying he knows that, as he is engulfed by an ominous aura of destruction, and transformed into Ultra Ego. Vegeta smirks, saying that Frieza should bow, not only to the Prince of all Saiyans, but the God of them. Frieza closes his eyes, pushing his finger to his lip, and he begins laughing, transforming into his golden form, and he states that whether he's a prince or a god, he's still a pathetic monkey, and he will be the one who bows under his heel. Goku has a serious expression on his face. There's no way. Does Frieza really only need his golden form to take Vegeta on at this stage? Surely it's just overconfidence. Frieza can't sense divine energy after all. For the moment, Goku assumes it's arrogance, but he watches to wait and see. Frieza may be even more of a threat than he first realised. Frieza points his finger at Vegeta, firing a flurry of death beams, however they dissipate on impact of Vegeta's aura of destruction. Vegeta then appears in front of Frieza, attempting to punch Frieza in the face, but Frieza catches his fist with his tail before slamming him into the ground repeatedly. Frieza has a disappointed expression, saying he fought with all that bravado, he would at least give some minor resistance. However, apparently, the pride of the prince was bigger than expected. Vegeta then begins laughing to Frieza's shock as he stands up and lands a devastating gut punch on the tyrant alongside a right hook to his nose, which sends him flying back. Frieza gets aggravated, flying towards Vegeta and landing a barrage of punches on Vegeta. But Vegeta just keeps on laughing before catching one of his punches and then headbutting Frieza, proceeding to then swipe his legs and choke slam him into the dirt. Vegeta then outstretches his hand towards a seemingly unconscious Frieza on the ground, a ball of Hakai energy forming in his palm, and Vegeta tells Frieza that it's time he erases his scum from the face of the universe. No resurrections this time. Vegeta is about to erase Frieza once and for all, but just before he does, Frieza grabs Vegeta's leg with his tail and crushes it. Vegeta is screaming in pain as he reverts to his base form, and Frieza then shoots a flurry of death beams at Vegeta's chest, bringing him to the brink of death, and as the final death beam flies towards Vegeta, Goku appears in front of him and smacks the beam away. Vegeta falls to the ground, breathing his last breaths, but Goku crouches down, putting a sensei bean into his mouth and making Vegeta chew it. With the last of his energy, Vegeta swallows it, narrowly saving his life, however Vegeta faints straight after. Goku turns around with a stern expression on his face. He's been waiting for this moment for too long, training for this moment for too long. For the first time and he doesn't know how many years, he is going to go all out. Fur grows all over Goku's body, as a tail grows out alongside his hair. Goku is transformed into Super Saiyan 4, and is going to show Frieza the true power of Primal Saiyan Rage. Goku throws a punch at Frieza, 
Frieza blocking the punch and then countering with one of his own. But Goku then blocks that hit. Goku jumps back, knowing if he is going to stop Frieza, then he will have to transform higher. He was only able to even out his power with Frieza now by putting all of his key into his arm while punching and then all of his key into his other arm while blocking. Goku knows, however, that if he does transform higher, Frieza will most likely do the same, and Goku isn't sure if he'll be strong enough to take on Frieza after that, so he needs to at least try wear him down while in this weaker state. Goku rushes towards Frieza, throwing two jabs, which Frieza avoids, before Goku jumps up and tries to land a kick on Frieza's jaw. But Frieza catches his leg and tries to chop on it to snap it. But Goku catches his arm with his tail and then puts his hands together and slams down on the top of Frieza's head. Frieza shouts in pain, throwing the right hook to the centre of Goku's chest, cutting off his oxygen and then grabbing Goku by the throat before tossing him a short distance away. Frieza has had enough. He's ending this monkey once and for all. Frieza begins to power up, his key rising astronomically as he lets out a roar of rage. Goku's eyes widen as a cold feeling of fear shivers down his spine. The transformation Frieza used to defeat himself and Vegeta with a single blow in his previous timeline. Black Frieza is here. The drop of sweat rolls down Goku's face, but he is determined to win. He's been training all this time just for this moment. Goku closes his eyes, his hair turning silver as he opens his eyes and they are silver as well. Goku has transformed into true Mastered Ultra Instinct. Frieza instantly arrives in front of Goku, already throwing a swift punch which Goku narrowly dodges, the blue slightly skimming Goku's hair, and Goku then proceeds to jump into the air and power up a Kamehameha in his hands. Frieza smirks, pointing a finger at Goku and firing a single death beam at Goku, Goku riding the beam with his Kamehameha and then firing it point blank at Frieza, but once the beam dissipates, Frieza is standing there, brushing the dust off his shoulders. Goku has a shocked expression on his face, as Frieza slightly chuckles, throwing a punch towards Goku's gut, which yet again, Goku narrowly avoids. But this time, the blow is even closer than last time. Frieza then flies up into the air, raising his two arms above his head and forming a death ball. He could kill Goku with ease if he wanted to, but he'd much rather watch Goku die slowly in the abyss of space. Frieza throws a death ball at the planet, Goku jumping in to intercept it and putting his hands out, trying to hold the ball of energy back However, he's rapidly being pushed down to the surface of the planet. Vegeta wakes up, seeing what's going on, and quickly outstretches his hands towards Goku, giving him all of his energy and shouting for Goku to win this. He's entrusting him with his pride, and the pride of their entire race. Goku's fall begins to slow to a halt, the death ball disappearing completely. Frieza has a confused expression on his face, as nothing but silence is heard. Both Vegeta and Frieza look at Goku, who is floating there, with his head down. Fur begins to grow all over Goku's body once again, along with a tail growing out alongside his hair. But this time, it's different. It's happening while Goku is already inside Tree Master Ultra Instinct. That's right. Goku has achieved a new realm of power entirely. Goku has achieved Primal Ultra Instinct. Vegeta, the face of pride, and Frieza has one of pure terror and disbelief. Goku looks up at Frieza, and before Frieza can react, Goku is already in front of him, and has already planted his fist into Frieza's chest, nearly punching a hole in it. Frieza coughs out a severe amount of blood, but pushes on, landing a right hook in Goku's face, but Goku just smiles, spitting a drop of blood onto Frieza's face, and wiping the smudge of a scratch off his own. Frieza then feels pain in every part of his body. Goku moved so fast that he punched every millimetre of his body, and it didn't even look like he moved. Goku then grips Frieza by the throat, and says who would have thought that with the amount Frieza called him a monkey, he'd actually lose to Goku while he's in this primal state. Frieza reverts to his final form, no longer having the energy to even move, let alone maintain his strongest transformation. Goku then tells Vegeta to come over here, Vegeta flying over, and Goku giving Vegeta enough energy to go off for Ego. Vegeta powers up, and Goku says that he stole his win before, so it's only fair he lets Vegeta have this one. Besides, Vegeta is the only one who can ensure he will never be revived again. Vegeta closes his eyes and smirks, saying very well, as he places his hand on Vegeta's back and utters the final word Frieza will ever hear, Hakai. Frieza then screams as he feels the greatest pain imaginable, and then nothing. The tyrant has been erased once and for all. Goku reverts space form, smiling and giving Vegeta a thumbs up. Vegeta tells Goku to not get ahead of himself, if a clown like him could combine Super Saiyan 4 with his Ultra Form, 
then he will do the same. Goku scratches the back of his head and starts laughing, saying he's sure he'll reach it in no time. Goku and Vegeta then leave the planet. Vegeta going back to Beerus' planet to continue with training with Ultra Ego and eventually becoming the next god of destruction. Meanwhile, Goku returns to Earth and spends time with his family. He didn't realise how much time he lost with his family until he nearly lost the chance to see them again. Now, he just wants to enjoy his time with them, training up Goten and helping Chi Chi raise their youngest son, since Gohan became independent some time ago. Anyway, with that being said, this is where the series is going to end. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the series, and if you did, then make sure to like, comment and subscribe. Hopefully I'll see you all in the next one, and Goku and MHA Season 3 is coming soon. But yeah, goodbye guys.